inaugural use of these yes brand new mm -hmm. hot off the press <laughs> yes thank you fanny for donating yes 20 uh, we're going to invoke uh guru rampache on the 24th page 24 so this it is the inaugural inaugural use of this Beautiful. but it also means that there will be revisions <laughs> this is the first <laughs> and already I see the pagination according to the table of contents is a little bit off, so. Um, okay, so we're all on uh, Appendix 2, the seven-line prayer. Yes, Oh, 
Vajrayana here in the West, and in particular, there's a, a strong connection between um, Guru Rinpoche and Tara practice. Um, the Tara, the Tara Tantra was uh, discovered as a terma, which all termas are linked to treasure teachings that were buried by Guru Rinpoche. Um, in particular teachings that would be revealed for um, the expedient means of particular times. And so termas are stowed away for the ripening of the right time. And Tara practice um, has been appropriate for many times and up until this day. And so we can um, look with gratitude that such a thing took place and that we have this historical figure and um, continuity with Guru Rinpoche um, and the, the lineage up until our own teacher, uh, my own teacher, Lama Norla Rinpoche, the connection from Rinpoche, um, who we know and have met, all the way back to Guru Rinpoche. So invoking these um, presents is receiving the blessing of the lineage. And receiving the blessing of the lineage is going beyond um, what any of us can do in this day and age um, to just you know go to Borders or Amazon and pick up a book and read about uh, a practice versus um, coming into the presence of, of someone who has committed their life to actualizing the practice in their own mind stream. And not only actualizing the practice in their own mind stream, but offering it. Um, finally realizing that the fruit they can offer it to others. So um, it's always helpful to call to mind um, the lineage as we begin. And in addition to recollecting the lineage, we're recollecting uh, our intention. Um, in particular, that we're about to take up the study, practice, and contemplation of uh, the Mahayana Dharma, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of all beings. And so we can just take a moment to be present within that aspiration. Let it be more than just a thought. But the actual energy with which our mind is focused. And along with this bodhicitta aspiration, it's also helpful to um, recollect the four thoughts that turn the mind to the Dharma. So we have this precious opportunity 
um, that we've created just by showing up here today. And so being acknowledging that opportunity and likewise acknowledging um, that up until this point we've been um, perhaps not as skillful or um, wakeful with our intentionality you know, until we've arrived with this energy and focus um, we may have sown seeds for um, our own and others suffering and so we just recollect that we're turning our minds towards beneficial action um, for ourselves and others um, relating to the the principle of karma in a skillful way and likewise we're recollecting um, that our life this precious opportunity is um, at any moment extinguished and because that is the case it brings into a sharp focus our meaning and our purpose in this moment and finally um, a sense of renunciation that we have ar arrived here having recognized that within this precious opportunity uh, if we don't seize this opportunity our tendencies towards confusion and this confusion is one that leads us through the waves of suffering birth old age sickness and death and so contemplating all of that we can also rejoice because here we are with those realities and this um, tremendous gift of uh, the Mahayana Dharma and in particular um, the practice of Tara. Um, so how do, we, how do we know to rejoice for something um, such as Tara? Um, well, we can relate to the practice, but let's just arrive at what Tara practice has been outside of our context. Um, in Tibet, in every single monastery, Tara is practiced every single morning. Um, at our own monastery in New York, um, Tara Yoldok uh, is practiced uh, at least two, twice a year to avert obstacles. Um, there's a tremendous amount of um, energy and diligence placed on recollecting this, this form of um, skillful means. And so that's something that we can look at and marvel at, um, but it's still, you know, what does it mean to us that the, those are the case, that's the tradition? Um, well, in our life, we can relate to um, our teachers, who, you know, the Karmapa, Lama Norla Rinpoche, if you have connection to Kala Rinpoche, you can look at, to these people and examine their qualities, um, examine what they express in relationship to their life and in relationship to the beings within their life, and um, develop a, a sense of aspiration that those qualities that they they express are qualities that we too can express um, this quality of wisdom compassion loving kindness um, uh, a devotion to, to the Dharma to practice a diligence um, so all of these things we just are it's useful to go through and, and arrive at why we would even go through the trouble of trying to take on something that is um, can provide provide challenges and um, great blessings both so um, we all have arrived here with a curiosity um, about how to engage the the dharma the vajrayana dharma and maybe we've had a taste of it. Um, we, we just practice Medicine Buddha and Amitabha, and we go through these practices with um, 
a willingness and a curiosity. Um, so it's important to examine um, where that's coming from and where we want to go with that. And for me personally, um, that's the basis. Uh, in addition to bodhicitta, that's the basis. I have to go through that just to arrive um, with the inspiration and the clarity of what it is uh, I'm about to practice. So I always recommend it to others as well. It might seem a bit rote, but we, we need to cultivate the habit um, until it's a part of our body and mind stream to just know we, we have to go through those exercises like calisthenics, you know, lifting our, doing our repetitions. Um, so a little bit of background uh, with this practice that we'll um, go through today. First personally, or maybe the other way around. Um, first personally, Tara practice um, was something introduced to me uh, at the time that I was given my refuge name by uh, Lama Norla Rinpoche. But I can reflect back before then um, that when I was first investigating um, Tibetan Buddhism, of course, the images of a female Buddha would resonate with a female. <laughs> so here I was, um, a young person wanting to understand this, um, this very glittery, sort of uh, exotic seeming thing. Um, and you can go online at, at any point, you can go online and you can Google Tibetan Buddhism. And what comes up is um, a mixed bag. And uh, we're really fortunate that we have the, the ground of authentic teachers so that when we look up those things, we can, we can discern what's good and what's maybe not so useful. Um, but for me, it was helpful even having not um, taken refuge yet with Lama Norla Rinpoche, it was helpful to see, um, I, re I remember my first search came up with praises to Tara. And it was very interesting to read all of these poetic verses and have, you know, whatever my mindset was about the magic of you know, connecting to this um, transcendent being and, you know, calling forth the poetry of her qualities. Um, but it wasn't enough for me to just read those off of the computer screen and be like, oh, she's here, you know, you know, my, she's answered my prayers, all of that. Um, but I still I relate to that as a, a positive seed, and this will all make sense as the story unfolds. Um, but at the point that I came into contact with Rinpoche and took refuge, I was being given um, the name Samtan Droma. And so on the card, it was um, said, uh, stable-minded or meditation Tara. and. Um, and then Tara, one who liberates, one who frees. And so, you know, any little inspiration or, um, you know, specialness, I think is, is uh, it has a, a benefit at first because we, we do need to um, have a, or I needed to have a little bit of confidence in what was about to happen. Um, to enter so deeply into something so foreign and so um, vast. And so I, I sort of tucked that away, that blessing from Rinpoche to, to what does this mean, you know, this connection to Droma, this deity who has these profound powers to liberate. And that was kind of the perspective I had 
um, in seeking for a, a while. And in that simple way, I would just um, turn to my my own practice, which was also very simple. It wasn't chanting a sadhana or anything. It was um, looking inside. It was turning into my my own feelings and heart and asking and calling upon um, someone. <laughs> someone, please, you know, guide me. Someone, please, you know, eliminate these obstacles, eliminate this confusion. And at the point that I had a someone in particular to call upon, um, then that was who I was asking. It was, it was Tara that I was calling upon. And so I carried that forth in a, a very simple way. And then when I learned the mantra, you know, I, that was the first mantra I learned as well. Um, and I, I sat there like, what is this thing about mantra? I have this mala and I have this mantra. And I sat in a, a, on a car ride, a long car ride, just saying the mantra, Om Tara Tukye Om Very, like nothing special, you know, just doing the la 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 about it. And here I am continuing to to just do it. You know, there wasn't a, there was not really a doubt, but there was um, a longing and um, maybe a, a belief, actually. There was a belief that, well, maybe if I just do it, you know, there will be that little magic um, that Tara will appear and, um, you know, I'll be enlightened. That was actually what I was hoping for. I would be enlightened, <laughs> um, at least within the first couple of years of retreat, you know, I would be enlightened. Um, and then in retreat, we are practicing, um, we're handed this practice to do every morning. And actually, we didn't even have instruction. We didn't have instruction for what to visualize or how to do it. We just um, chant the text, and within the text itself, there's the instruction of what to visualize. And so I'm doing all of this a bit um, on my own, um, but it's, it's still, there, it's still there in front of me. These words, and I'm 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 pouring myself into this thing of of creating this beautiful green goddess. But is green goddess actually beautiful? And like, how do I construct it? All of it's happening um, through uh, just effort, and I think that initial seed that, oh, well, I have this name of Samtandroma, like I really have this connection to Tara, that must mean something. And time goes on, and I go through the, the practice of creating, um, of, you know, visualizing blessings, of doing mantra recitation, um, and it's all very ordinary after a while. Um, after a while, uh, when I'm starting to feel the, the heat of anger arise or the, the trauma of confusion arise, um, I hold on to that mantra and I'm thinking, well, Tara will be there. And so I, I call Om Tara Tutori Tari Soha. And it's really interesting because it's hard to completely explain how totally ordinary this is. Like on the one hand, it's, it's so interesting to think I'm creating a relationship with this magical being. But on the other hand, it's totally practical and rational and absolutely ordinary and as soon as i call to mind this mantra you know the anger starts to cool off and the the um confusion and turmoil starts to break through like you know, the cloud starts to break apart and all the while i'm not experiencing anything like 
enlightenment. I'm not experiencing anything like a rainbow body or like all of these like really magical things that I think are a part of enlightenment. But these ordinary things are happening um, and uh, the alleviation of these ordinary experiences are um, also happening swiftly. And so time goes on, you know, I'm, I'm committed to my retreat practice and go through all of the vicissitudes of um, doubts and feelings of glimpses and holding on to those glimpses and realizing that it was all um, these attachments to things that don't, don't really exist and so on and so forth. But Tara is still there all along. And at a certain point, Tara actually became the magic. Like I actually could hold on to the magic as well um, because her presence became a part of um, my mind. It just became a part of, of uh, seeing and feeling and, and connecting to others and um, now it's a, a tremendous um, refuge. You know, it's just what, what does it feel like to relax into who you are? And what does it feel like to see others as who they are? And um, that's all very ordinary. And that's the weird thing about trying to teach about Tara is because it goes through this process of magic, maybe an, a magical inspiration or a, a hopeful longing for something magical to happen, for some liberator who comes and you know, appears before us, because that's what it says, you know, if she appears and she does these elimination of all poisons and all sorts of things, um, but it's also just very ordinary. It's also that to recollect the qualities and presence of this being is to find ourselves relieved of the ordinary mental afflictions, you know, the, the ordinary obstacles that we encounter. So that's a little preamble and then um, a, little, a few little antidotes. So uh, on a plane um, from India to here or the vice versa, my first time going, um, I was sitting there with our group, it was with KTC, um, pilgrimage to India and I had never experienced you know turbulent turbulence, turbulence to that degree mm. where I was coming like I was lifted out of the seat mm. and for a few seconds it felt like you know where you're just like wow we're really dropping <laughs> and so it was enough to bring to mind impermanence and um, and it was really uh, yeah okay well this might happen it might happen right now and it was really interesting again sort of without effort without you know special things happening Tara was present you know as soon as I recollected impermanence and death Tara was right there, and the refuge and relaxation was there. And I never had had that experience before. I had heard that that was part of the thing, you know, that's part of what you get. But I, I didn't know or trust in it or believe that that was true until having had that experience, that there is tremendous relaxation at death possible when we have uh, the, the contact um, with our mind as inseparable from the Buddhas. 
and from these um, qualities that recollect our our being as indestructible, as unborn and indestructible. So that was one anecdote. Um, and there have just been, you know, others throughout time. Um, I, I know we, Fanny was sharing some that remind me as, as well. She shared a story, maybe she'll share it later on. Um, but when people come and certain situations just run really smoothly and it happened in um, concert with, you know, meeting uh, a person who happened to be named Tara. Like that has happened to me too. <laughs> so it's like, so this is very ordinary. And it's also uh, inspiring and magical. Um, and magical in the sense of mystery that we can't we can't confine it by um, means in which our science can you know our scientific method could verify it. You know it's a, a very personal thing. Um, so I say all this because. Part of our job when we're arriving um, within a practice of the Vajrayana is to examine where our mind is in relationship to something that has more to it than we can possibly theorize or um, make known through a scientific method an outer scientific method. I think all of us have our own experiment going on. And that's something, that's our responsibility, is within our own experience. How is it true and how are we relating to it? And in arriving there, examining um, what there may be in terms of um, already natural inspiration for practicing and, and enhancing that natural inspiration, our reasons for taking on uh, a practice, and examining our doubts about it and holding those, um, being willing to be skeptical of our skepticism um, applying the same discernment that we apply to um, sort of pick away the magic or the mystery, um, apply that discernment to our own tendencies. And, and then once we've decided that we are going to seize hold of our curiosity and embark on the journey, um, not stopping, not stopping prematurely, going with it, going with it for a good long while. Um, that long while may be different lengths of time, um, but really um, having a willingness to hedge your bets or giving the benefit of the doubt towards um, what you are about to practice. Um, because it does take time to unfold, and it's not what we think. It's not, uh, it doesn't come in the way that we might imagine it to come or think it will come. And part of that is the, the patience or what I found just the repetition of going over and over again, um, maybe daftly. I mean, it could be... I, I look at who I was and what I was doing, and it was not like done with precision or done with um, like a lot of insight or or theoretical background. It was just doing it um, with a, a bit of um, endearing 
naivety. You know, it was just like, wow, it would be really cool if Tara would appear to me. <laughs> that sort of thing. So whatever you bring, um, I think that's the other wonderful teaching of um, that we're reminded over and over again in the Vajrayana is that whatever we bring is the the nourishment of our practice. It's the the quality that we are transforming in our practice. And so we don't need to um, worry too much if what we bring is um, a lot of uh, naiv naivety. We don't need to worry too much if what we bring is a lot of um, uh, doubt. We just keep turning and turning towards that and looking very clearly at what we bring so that we know where we are and where we stand and we're aware um, uh, as we go. And then once you actually start the practice, then leave all of the, the what got you there. Leave all of the theories, leave all of that sort of on the side and then really pour your mind into mindfulness of what you're doing. Um, so those are generally what we arrive at when we're um, doing a sadhana. It's, maybe it took us reading some Jeffrey Hopkins or you know whatever to, to understand the theory behind it. But once we get to it, we're just doing it. We're doing it and we're, our mind is, is focused on what we're doing. So the approach that I wanted to take with regard to this was um, if it's something that you want to do, we can go through just the nuts and bolts of the practice. Um, and then I would also like to lead um, a guided visualization for the part of Tara practice in which we are recognizing um, sort of the juiciness of the practice, the, the quality of uh, nature of mind within um, the Tara practice. So who all has practiced this in short form or long form before? A long time ago, though. Long time. I've done it, but I've done it. <coughs> okay. Why well, I'm I'm glad for having a memory when I was in India, um, and I think it's Tara. There's a statue around um, Bodhgaya, around the temple, and people would close their eyes and then they would walk towards it. I remember Faridun doing that towards Sri Tara and like touching it. Is there any special? Significance, and I saw Rinpoche do that, and mm -hmm. and that was just particular for the, that statue. It's like right, right before you go in to see the. Yeah, I have a picture yeah. next to that statue, and if I recollect, it's um, been I think maybe it was like a Tisha or someone actually had a vision of Tara oh. at that statue. Oh. So there's um, a blessing and expectation oh, there. Okay. That okay. She's there. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, one of the first things um, to recollect or to reflect on is what it, Tara the Liberator. What are we wanting to be um, liberated from? So, how personal are we getting? <laughs> our glaciers, our, our mental afflictions, our samsara, our sympathizers, our clinging, our ego clinging. So I, I recommend Sorry. when we begin a, our practice, sometimes we, in the context of, of group sittings, we don't take this time, or like at the monastery sometimes it's like, whew, we're just like full on into it. Oh. I've found, um, mm -hmm that my longing um, for liberation from whatever it is, in whatever moment, if I just spend some time dwelling on that before mm -hmm. I go, 
then um, the the liberation is almost within that. Mm. You know, it's like the coming into contact with the first noble truth, you know, recognizing the truth of suffering. Mm. So first, we just arrive with what is it that we are mm. suffering, and just taking some time with that. And if there's nothing there, then we might be practicing for someone else's suffering. We might be longing for other beings to be free from suffering. So we can get particular about that. And then, you know, why? What, what else is there? What else are we looking for? There's something we're wanting to be free from and there's also something we want to find. So bringing that in as well. Finding that feeling in the body. And as you find it in the body, breathing around the edges and allowing the space around that feeling to expand. As if you're holding this longing. In the palms of your hands. Or in the cradle of your heart. Whatever is salient for you. Whatever allows you to be tenderly open to the reality of this longing. And that's it. That's actually the complete Tara practice. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and being serious and facetious, but that is um, the essence of Tara, is becoming the, the compassionate witness to longing and seeking. Um, so it's important to, to dwell on that as you begin. Um, now, what comes after that is the means. Uh, Vajrayana is a path of means. There's limitless means. And um, as the, the attitude that we have in the midst of a Vajrayana practice is one um, 
that takes into account what is called the three excellences. So we have within this one sadhana, um, the Hinayana, the Mahayana, and the Vajrayana. And what's so wonderful about a sadhana like this is that whatever your propensities, even, you know, and those might go back and forth. You might find yourself totally fine with the idea of your mind inseparable from Tara one day and the other needing to relate to her as an outer um, being. Um, but within this practice, it carries all of those um, stages. And that's why uh, I remark on, you know, how it was for me to come into it with whatever naivete, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It still carried forth to the ultimate presence of Tara. Um, so wherever, however we are arriving, um, we arrive. And we arrive and we stay with mindfulness with what we're about to practice. And part of that, if you were to do this um, in a traditional context, one of the things that you would do is um, do it first thing in the morning before having eaten anything uh, such as meat, garlic, onions, um, and that's part of the, the Kriya Tantra, um, the emphasis on purity, so purifying yourself and purifying your environment as a basis for purifying um, and being in purity with this appearance of Tara. So there's that traditional way of encountering it. And of course, it's um, beneficial if that's something that you're able to do, to do that. Clean the shrine, um, you know, make the offering of a mandala uh, to Tara, have a statue, a picture, all of those things in place. And then the, the components of the practice in this manual that I put together, or the sauna book that I put together, we have a middle form, which is excerpted from the long form at the monastery. And it has a refuge and uh, an invocation of Tara. a self-visualization of Tara, um, offerings, praises, and the meditation on the mantra in various ways, and then a completion phase and request for benefits. And then, as well, we have the short form, which is on page 25 and 26, Appendix 3. And this is what you will more often practice. Um, it's practiced every other day at the monastery. And uh, if you're ever, this is something that you can readily practice because it is short and it has within it um, a front visualization of Tara and the seven branch prayer as well as a recitation of the praises and a recollecting of the benefits. And then finally, when I was at the monastery, I asked Rinpoche, well, for me, it was important that there be no obstacle to just arriving with some relationship to Tara. And sometimes we don't have a lot of time to go through the liturgies. And I'm, I'm going to be offering this in Greensboro and Knoxville. And I just wanted some people to have something to connect to that was a lineage as well. And so uh, Rinpoche gave a verbal transmission of two lines so if you 
wanted to just keep it very simple, just two lines, and there you are with the, the complete Tara blessing. And those are at the back. Jetsun Pama Droma Che Cheno Jiktang Duna Kuna Japdu Sol Venerable Glorious Goddess of Liberation, hear me now, see me now, come to me now. I pray to you, clear away all suffering. And then recitation of the mantra. So I think it would be a good time to maybe just ask some questions and then we can go through the practice together um, in full. And so how does that sound to you? Yeah? You wanna check the time. We have until one, is that true? Okay. So any questions? To thus far about what we're doing. Okay. So when it says Tara the Liberator, I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I know there's white, there's green. Mm -hmm. So are we embodying both of them or? I guess it'll come later, but... Um, mm -hmm. So this is Tara and her 21 manifestations. So this is great. This is why I have everyone ask questions, because mm -hmm. then you get what you want and mm -hmm. not what I say. Mm -hmm. um, so Tara and her 21 aspects. Here's another great thing. We have um, this figure with these qualities that can happen in one form, or if we feel like, well, not only do I need to be free from my confusion, but um, someone just uh, broke in and I'm afraid, or um, you know, I'm sick, or um, I have this relationship difficulty. We have 21 different varieties and qualities, um, and actually, if you go deeper into a, a practice of Tara, you can say a specific mantra for each one of those. And that's something we didn't receive in our retreat context. But if that's of interest to someone, they could do that. So there's 21. And it's fine to visualize um, Tara in her single form in any of those 21 emanations um, or in particular as uh, the green Tara and just recognizing the inseparability of Tara in that form with all 21 emanations and then as is generally the case in these practices we're not only recognizing the inseparability of her with those 21 but we are also seeing her as inseparable with all of our teachers all of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas um, so the quintessence of the blessings of the paramitas and uh, compassion and wisdom. <clears throat> um, so maybe that's a place to start. We'll just, before we even go into the, the liturgy, um, let's practice with what it means to bring forth a recollection of the field of merit the field of refuge. So a basic component of any sadhana is um, a field of merit. And we make offerings and we prostrate and we praise the field of merit um, in order to create the causes and conditions for the blessings um, to descend. Um, and Again, depending on where your mind is at or propensities, all of this sounds like, what? Like blessings descending, like what does that mean? What does that look like? And we, it's not our job at that point to question. We just, okay, that's what, what it is, and we go, go for it. And it's not what we think it is, in other words. That's the, that's the easiest thing to, to help 
re-channel our energy and focus. Is that it's not what we think it is. We're going to take these instructions and we're going to see what happens in our minds. Um, but as long as we're thinking about what's going to happen, that's not it. Hmm. So let's arrive in our body and recollecting. that our environment and everything in it dissolves into emptiness. And from within emptiness appears a lotus moon seat. And upon that appears the syllable Tom. And if you need a reference for that, you can look on page 19. And so we're directing our energy towards the mindfulness of seeing these elements develop, creating these elements of the lotus, the moon disk, and the syllable tom, green, luminous, And that Tom emits light rays in every direction. You can imagine this happening swiftly or slowly and just experiment. Our, our mind might like one more than the other. It might be easier. So allow whatever comes easiest, most spontaneous. And that light is collected back into the tom. This tom grows even more luminous and brilliant. This light was collecting the blessings of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And then the light is emitted once more and touches all beings. Instantly purifying the veils of confusion and suffering. And this light collects back into the Tom, which is transformed into the Arya Tara, the Noble Tara. seated in front and slightly above you on this lotus moon seat. Her right leg is slightly outstretched, ready to step into the world to benefit beings. And her left is up in meditative equipoise she never loses sight of the nature of mind. Never strays from equanimity. Acts on everyone's behalf without trend going into the extremes. And her right hand is at her knee in the gesture of offering refuge. And her left holds a lotus. 
Notepala flower blue. And her hair is partly upswept, partly free flowing. And just to behold her is to feel uh, a sense of upliftment, awe, and beauty. So explore seeing and feeling Tara's presence before you in this way. Her adornments, jewelry, wrists, ankles, neck, her eyes gently gazing upon you. And those very same longings, that very same tenderness that you had at the beginning, allow her to witness this here. And feel what it feels like to have her gaze upon all of those tight spots, tender spots. Free from judgment, suffuse with kindness and care. You can keep working with that um, presence, that felt presence, as you create as well all around her, her retinue of the 20 Taras. So the felt presence of the central Tara allows our mind to rest and relax, which allows our creation, the visualization to come more readily a relaxed open mind is one that can see very clearly effortlessly so allow these 20 other manifestations of Tara to arise they're all very similar to the central figure, but holding different implements, different colors. It's fine to just see light. It's fine to just generate a confidence, even if we can't see clearly, we can feel and develop confidence that they are present to us, ready to act for us. And beyond the retinue, it's 
starting with the lineage lamas, Kala Rinpoche, Lama Norla Rinpoche, the Karmapa, whoever it may be, allowing the presence of all of the lineage lamas. And beyond them, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, this whole realm and environment filled with the presence of the great compassionate ones. Ready to show us liberation And then the liturgy will, will carry this out, but I'll continue the guidance of the, the nuts and bolts. So we've welcomed this field of merit before us. And now we reflect on taking refuge and perhaps even seeing ourselves and other beings with whom we are practicing prostrating, um, bowing to Arya Tara, the 21 emanations, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Taking refuge. And then we can likewise see offerings, offering ourselves all of our pleasures, our sense pleasures, including this mandala that we, we describe it as the 10 billion fold universe. So we can start small and just offer up what first comes to mind of our attachments to sense pleasures. And you can feel that or see that pouring forth from your heart and your hands and the hearts and hands of those that may be present with you practicing. And feel that pouring forth from you, giving away effortlessly all that we relate to in our life through the senses. And then those imagined offerings too, creating mandalas in every atom full of worlds and riches, allowing that to pour forth as well to the field of merit. And then requesting from Tara and the field of merit requesting that they show us liberation through the Dharma. This is requesting that they turn the wheel of the Dharma. And rejoicing in the merit of all beings that um, allows it to even be the case that we have this practice. We have these opportunities. So feeling a sense of inspiration and reveling, rejoicing, happiness, joy, gratitude for this opportunity created through all beings merit.
and as well bearing nakedly all that we wish to confess any ways that we've been unkind to ourselves unkind to others bringing mindfulness allowing witness to that and asking this field of refuge to remain throughout our practice and beyond, allowing us to always connect with them. We request that they not turn from samsara, that they always remain in samsara for the benefit of beings. And finally, dedicating all of the merit of what we have practiced, what we will practice, what we are practicing, dedicating it for supreme enlightenment and nothing less. So what we've done in, in creating the field of merit is we've laid in place the, the mysterious and miraculous conditions for Tara to actually be known to us. And so we go through it, perhaps by rote, but we still go through it. And we um, have that as the basis of beginning. Um, and we can keep that as present to us, a spacious presence in our mind as well. We're no, we're no longer sitting in um, our usual uh, living room or shrine room. You know, this is also not a usual living room, so we have that benefit. We don't have to work as hard. Um, but also, this is a, a pure realm. We've taken the opportunity to transform our perception from ordinary perception to uh, ourselves as uh, enlightened beings and this realm as uh, a Buddha realm. And so these are other things to recollect before practicing. So the tune will, will be familiar to you. And I think we'll just go through it once and chant the praises once. And then there will be plenty for you to do again and again at other times, but we'll just get a taste. Oh, well maybe we should wait for um, Fanny. Does anyone have any questions so far? Of the visualization? Or? Is there a record reference like the last one? A reference? A recommended reference? For Tara? For Tara? Yeah. Um, there's three books that um, have gems within them. Um, the first that I, I encountered was Bokar Rinpoche's book, um, Tara the Divine Feminine. And it um, has a translation, a commentary on all the praises has uh, some history of who Tara was and how she came to be, as well as um, stories uh, that inspire faith in her practice. Um, then as far as more of the nuts and bolts of how to conduct oneself in the sadhana, there's a book called um, Tara, Skillful Means. Skillful Grace, Skillful Grace by Toko Origin and um, Trulshik Rinpoche. 
um, and it goes through um, Tara as a retreat practice. Um, so it has like how to set up the shrine, that sort of thing. And um, then there's Pema, uh, not Pema Trujan, the other, like the, I think a Lama Zopa student Trujan, there's another Trujan, I can't remember her name. She did one called um, Free Your Mind, and she goes through Tara and all of the paramitas, and it's just a commentary on the paramitas, but Tara within her um, qualities embodies all of the paramitas, so it's appropriate to reflect on those. I think we can, <clears throat> I can, I'll, I'll remember to email you and then we can, you know, those people who aren't taking notes, we can get that. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the piece that's always difficult to, you know, condense all of this into an afternoon or a morning is that um, there are many angles to go from. And, you know, one of them is just how do we practice? How do we do the not only how do we practice what what how do we visualize there's that element of practice how do we chant how do we visualize what are we doing what does it mean um who is tara and what is, what's in it for us all of those things um so i'm happy to go in any direction with you guys about that um as you see fit uh, as you see most beneficial um but maybe we'll just have a, a taste of the, the experience of it for now. appearing to tame beings. Approach Aryatara. So we went from um, the initial front visualization to recollecting ourselves as Tara. Um, and that's 
part of the the sadhana, um, and it's interesting when I asked Rinpoche about self visualization of Tara, um, he suggested that if you haven't received the empowerment for Tara. Um, to focus on the front visualization rather the, than the self visualization. Um, however, uh, if you've received any Vajrayana empowerment, then um, it's fine to recollect the self visualization as Tara. And again, that's because of um, the, the propensity that you might have towards um, there being more benefit at a certain point to making offerings, generating merit, um, calling upon the outer form of Tara um, rather than uh, the, the inner Tara, the self-Tara, the self-visualization of Tara. So either one is appropriate and um, experiment with both. Um, because you'll, you'll find that one will fulfill different needs. Um, I, I found that to be the case. And so we'll go on to the next phase. Jisi cho pa da je pa de si chong den shu su so. Moved by compassion for myself and all beings, show your miraculous, miraculous powers and remain, remain here, conquerors, as long, as long as I make offerings to you. And then with Pema Kamalaya Sato, we make a mudra of the seat. So, Pema Kamalaya Sato. And this is offering a seat to Tara to remain. And then you can imagine that she accepts and takes the seat. Chu ying je par kang je te in pak ma dro ma kor je shu. A Samantra Bhadra offering cloud of real and imagined offerings expands to completely fill the universe. I offer this to the Venerable Tara and her retinue. And so we make these offerings in the traditional way with the traditional mudras. So uh, we can demonstrate and practice that. Um, this is a pekor. Om Arya Tare Sapare Vara Benza Argam Padyam Pupe Dupe Alake Gende Nevade Shapta um, so that, those are fun. This is like another way of being there, is doing the mudras. Our whole body is involved in the practice of the sadhana. Um, so we're blending our mind with these intentions in an outer way, an inner way, and an embodied um, presence. And uh, so, if we want to go through this a couple times so you can do it yourself. So, we start with a pekor. <laughs> and you can, you can kind of imagine like there's a crystal ball that you're circling. And seeing Rinpoche do it is better than seeing me do it, but this is good enough. And just feeling that you're you're creating this offering cloud before you. And you can open Om Aratara Sapari Wara Benza Argam 
Adyan, Pupe, Dupe, Aloke, Gende, Nelide, Shatta, Pratisai, Soha. So we have offering water, uh, or bathing water, perfumed water, flowers, incense, candles, um, drinking water, food, and music. Gende and Padyam. Um, I think Argam is the drinking water, Padyam is the foot washing. Foot washing, yep. And Gende is the perfume water. So that's these offerings on this level. Yes. So we have drinking water, uh, or sorry, foot washing water, drinking water, and perfume water. Um, and then flowers, incense, candles, food, and music. Great. So let's do it again. Om Arya Tara Sapare Vara Benza Argam Padyam Pupe Dupe Aloke Gende Nevele Shatta Pratisa Soha And at that point, um, if you had you know, drums and cymbals, Tara practice always has drums and cymbals. But this is good too. We have stuff like that stuffed in there. So. Oh, really? Well, we'll keep it simple for today. Yes. So you would offer uh, music uh, with Shapta. And again, let your mind be uh, expansive with what this means for these offerings to be filling the extent of space. This is an important exercise to just see what happens when you practice this limitless quality of offering. And you can pour it forth in the clouds, you can pour it forth in realms of appearances, worlds of appearances, however it comes. Let it be um, beautiful, luminous, expansive. And then with this next part, um, we'll do the mandala mudra. And we're offering um, the traditional mandala and if you're Some people don't know that. The mudra. Okay. Yeah. So how do we do this? We take our pinkies and we take the pinkies into opposite thumbs. And then we take our ring fingers as Mount Meru. And we take our middle fingers as um, two of the four continents. So we're looking with Mount Meru in the center, and then our um, middle fingers as two of the four continents, and our um, pinky fingers as the other two of the four continents. So Mount Meru in the four continents, and then um, within that, all good things. And this is this is recollecting. This is a, a support for seeing like every atom being a mandala. So that's another great thing to experiment with is how many mandalas within this room can we see? And then, um, then we start to see that what we see is actually limitless and emptiness, a mix of appearance emptiness. So all of it has a component to some ultimate benefit, even if it seems a little bit strange and clunky at first. But here we have this mandala, and we'll chant the traditional phrases. Oh my, I 
chantable English ones. And these are chanted some 21 times in, uh, during Droma Yuldok uh, at the monastery. We chanted very fast. In retreat, we chanted them very fast. It's very difficult to chant these slow. So no worries if it feels a little bit um, tricky. Uh, just keep uh, in mind the, the visualization and the presence of Tara in her retinue. Um Jetsin Ma Pamodrum Malacha Salo Chasatari Nirma Mahu Tutarai Jika Selma Ture Dakun Jimbe Toma Sohayi Kishala Dudo Chasadrama Nirma Pamu Chene Kechi Ladram Drama Chetan Sungan Chu Che Shell G Sajare Lani Nyungma Chatsa Take Tawa Kun Chu Kama Chene Sepe Shelma Karma Chancha Sukha Nam Chi Ratu Chela Ora Parma Chatsa Serna Chune Che G Hema Chani Nam Parjenma Jinpa Chonju Katu Chiwa Sopa Samtan Chonju Nima Chasa Dejin Jinpe Sutor Tuye Nampa Jawar Jama Malu Prana Jinpa Tope Shawe Se Chi Shin Chu Tenma Shasu Tutara Hongi Ge Dodam Chodan Nam Kakama Jitem Tunto Zapti Nenje Lupa Me Parthu Parnuma Tasa Jajan Me Lai Sangma Lung La Tasa Wang Tu Joma Trumpa Rolang Dreze Nam Dan Nya Chen So Chi Dung Wei Joma Tasa Jajin Jada Deji Paro Trumpa Rap Tu Joma Yanka Yan Jang Chap Chi Nen Te Me Par Trumpa Shin Tu Parma Chaksha tu re chikpa chen mo, ju che pa wa nam par joma. Chi te jau ni dro ne den ze, dra wo tam che ma lu soma. Chaksha kun chuk sun sun dra je, sur mo tu kar nam par chen mo. Ma lu che chi lo tu chen be, ra hi yo chi zo kan dra ma. Chaksha ra tu ga wa ji pe, or chen o ji dren wa pa ma. Jeva rap jay tu ta ra yi Tu dan jik ten wang tu zi ma Ta se o sa ji yong te so nam Tam che gu pa nu ma ni ma Tro nye yo e yi ke hong yi Pong wa tam che nam ta ro ma Ta se o da we tung pe ur jen Jen pa tam che shin tu bar ma Ro pe tru ne o pa me me Ta kwa shin tu o rap zi ma Cha tse ka pa ta me me ta ar ba wei jen wei hu na ni ma Ye chan ka nyo ko na gor wa dra yi po ni na pa jo ma Cha tse sa ji na ma jan ji jo ji na chan shan ji du ma Cha nyo jen te yi ye hong di ni pa jom to na mi ge ma Cha tse te ma ge ma ji ma nya ni te shi yo du ye ma So long down yak down den be Jik pa chen pa chong te ne ma Cha sa kun ye kor pa ka we Dra yi lu ne ra tu ge ma 
Ike chupe namito pe rikpa hongle droma nima Traksa jure chape tel pe hongi nam e saba nima Vira mandara dambe che jiktan sunna yawa nima Traksa lai sunne nam pe rinda chap chintra na nama Taran li chope chi ye ge juna malu bari nama ตัสสะไลสะมะจาวโพลาตามิยังเจเจนมาคุณิจจุจุเตวิจิเจสะตามิลานิปัสสะมะจัสสะนิมาตะวะเจเตชะนิปุระโหระสะมะอารันลิจ
bless that and, and cleanse that. So we'll chant that. From Tara's body, a stream of nectar falls, pours into me and all those to be protected, through the crown of our heads and fills our bodies, bestowing all blessings without exception. And then we would chant um, the English praises um, on page 22. Would you like some tea? Oh, yeah. yeah, thanks. So here we have this opportunity to sing. So don't resist. We are singing praises. And just like um, in a church where they get uh, devotional with the, the, sing, the songs in church, here's our church and here's our opportunity to get devotional to Tara. So look at your um, any hesitation you have to do that and offer that up as well to Tara to, to say, you know, let me be a child in this devotion to you, and let me praise you, and let me sing to you, and um, practice at it till we get there. Om Jetsun Mobotara, we bow to you. Homage Tara, swift and fearless, eyes that flash like summer lightning. Born from tears of great compassion, resting on a blooming lotus. Homage Tara, swift and fearless, freeing distress with Tutare. Ture offers joy and welfare, with so how we bow down to you. You whose face is glowing bright with many autumn moons of brilliance. Body shimmering resplendent like a starry sky at midnight. Hands adorned with lotus flowers grown from magic blue gold water. Queen of charity and effort, ethics, patience, peace, and wisdom. Crowning jewel of all the Buddhas, actions limitless and endless. Refuge of all bodhisattvas, you who live the paramitas. Amit chant of Tutarahum, wishes, faiths, directions, filling. Stamping on the microcosm, summoning all forces to you. Indra, Ani, Brahma, Vayu, all the gods make offerings to you. Spirits, zombies, ghosts, and yakshas, all the demons also praise you. As to act exclaiming, tray, tray, pop you, conquer powerful forces. Right leg up and left extended, dancing with a fiery passion. One who terrifies with Ture, vanquishing the chief of Maras. Lotus takes divine and scowling, pacifying all afflictions. Heart adorned with slender fingers, in the gesture of the three jewels. Mistress of eternal chakras, whirling bright and self-illumined. Wearing mirth as your tiara, circled by a glowing nimbus. Overcome with joyful laughter, charming all the world and Maras. Amishara, you who summon all the local earth protectors. Home your frowning wrinkled visage, firmly cleans and up to Russia. With the full moon as your headdress, body draped with silks and jewels. From your hair, not Amitabha, shines with rays of light eternal. And he's in a raging fire, like a Kalpa's and inferno. Joyful dancing goddess Tara, fearless in the face of challenge. Homage you whose feet are earthbound, pressing on the ground beneath you. Frowning at all harmful forces, Tara, Mother Earth's defender. Homage blissful, loving, peaceful, goddess of the true nirvana. Lightly singing, Om Soha, vanquishing discrimination. 
Circled by your joyful allies, joining hands to stop injustice. All ten syllables surrounding, hung is writ by liberation. Homage is beating our stamping, drumming sound of home beneath us. Moving with your joyful dancing, Meru Mandara and Vida. In your hand a glowing moon dish, shining like celestial water. Singing Tara Fay in chorus, softening our fears and nightmares. Masters, teachers, gods, and spirits, all relay upon you, Tara. Loving kindness as your armor, bringing peace in times of conflict. Homage you with sun and moon eyes, glowing bright, illuminating. Ara, ara, tuntutare, healing, helping, and restoring. Ornamented with three natures, showing us that peace is power. Vanquishing our fears and sorrows, homage, wisdom, Mother Tara. Please accept our songs and praises in these 21 verses. So we go through that um, as many times as we have time for. Um, and then we get to page Eighteen. <laughs> Noble, venerable lady, and your retinue, gaze on me with your love and compassion. Please bless me so that whatever I have prayed for may be accomplished without hindrance. So you can just take a moment to allow the presence of Tara and the 21 emanations surrounded by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to appear clearly. And then see, starting from the outside, these emanations dissolve, collecting into the central figure, into Tara's heart. And then Tara comes close to you and dissolves downward through your crown, becoming inseparable with you. chant that. The frontal visualization melts into light and dissolves into me. By the, By the blessing, blessing of our oneness, I, I, in the form of Tara, become appearance without an inherent nature. And then we'll recite uh, the mantra and invoking the pure sound of Tara through the mantra. And uh, during the mantra recitation, you can stabilize your mind on the sound and feeling of the mantra. You can recollect the, the phases of protection that we did earlier and purification through the wisdom nectar. Or you can recollect the three K 
pairings, all sounds as mantra, all appearance as Tara, and all movements of mind as indivisible with Tara's wisdom. Om Tare Tu Tare Tu
And an additional visualization as you're reciting the mantra, you can imagine in your heart on a luminous moon disk, the seed syllable tom, and rest the mind on the tom. And from the tom, light radiates collecting blessings from all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in the form of Tara. And this dissolves into your heart. And then light radiates again, touching all beings, transforming them into Tara, and collects back into your heart. So this is uh, the practice of the two benefits, collecting the blessings and offering the blessings. I'm just repeating this in a ceaseless cycle of radiating and collecting from the heart, resting the mind at that seed syllable, a tom, or a tigle, a small sphere of light, whatever is arising effortlessly for you. Oh, I'm sorry. And practice looking through Tara's eyes. Seeing all that's arising through the wisdom and compassion of Tara's eyes. Finally, we'll chant page 20. The deity and my mind are inseparable. I rest in the realm of truth in the natural state. So here, we can visualize ourselves dissolving into the heart and dissolving into emptiness, appearance, emptiness, insufferable. Just resting the mind. 
in the natural state, resting in the essence of Tara. Let Tara meditate for you. We re-arise in our normal form, but with the transformation and recollection and vow to re recollect our inner nature and separability with Tara. And we recite on page 21. By this virtue may we swiftly realize and fully embody the enlightenment of protective Sara. So as to bring all without exception to that same peerless realization. Like a wish fulfilling germ and a vase of plenty, you fulfill all our wishes without impediment. May we be indivisible from you, noble Tara, the victors and their progeny, and may there be the auspiciousness of your compassionate protection. So that's the nuts and bolts of it. And everything else can be elaborated on from there. So this would be maybe a good time to just let that settle in and then um, take a little break, maybe, and then we can come back for questions and discussion. Is that good? We're going to eat. Okay. <laughs>